Something to be said for being prepared before you press the record button. So let's go through some uh, basic maintenance, random things I need to take care of. Uh, doing Tuscans, right? My molds aren't the best. I'm like, eh, I should redo those. So I figured I will bring you along so you can see how I make molds. Since one of them is going to be a two-part mold, um, the rest are just one part, so it's super easy. But my work surface is kind of trashed. Although... A super clean deep freeze right there. It's a simple project, doesn't take too much time. Probably be okay, huh? Probably. And nobody more surprised than me. The right thing to do is clean up the area and just work where I'm comfortable and all my stuff is. Right? Kick out the number of times people are like, hey, why don't you come over and work on stuff at my place? And I'm like, no. All of my stuff is here. I know where everything is. It's a good excuse to uh, get rid of a bunch of stuff, though. Clean things up, right? And helmets, and helmets, and helmets. Lots of helmets. So that's the secret of costuming. Nobody ever tells anybody, right? They're like, yeah, get in, it'll be fun. You'll you'll have a great time. And they do. I absolutely love what I do. What they don't tell you is it takes up a lot of room. Look, look at this. We're gonna we're gonna stop for a minute. I'm gonna show you a couple things. And like I said, a little peek behind the curtain. This is my costume storage, right? Got my clone up here, still needs to be done. My Royal Guard, my Jedi, props I'm working on, Tuscan, random helmets. Art, my R5 is up there. The the buck his his buckets up there. Um, these are all the Tuscans I pulled that eventually need to go to people. This is my Tuscan. This is the beginning of Fett. My Stormtrooper. These are booth supplies for the 501st. It's primarily for Juliet Star Wars Day. That's where I keep all of my stuff for that. So that's a lot of costuming, right? And this is a side most people don't get to see. It's more bins. It's mostly Kim stuff. Like Sailor Moon, Vash, Tuscans. There's two Jedi up there. I mean, it's all costuming, right? And my laser cutter. It's my laser cutter. And then Kim's Tuscan and Pilots and sewing stuff and costumes. Costuming takes up a lot of room. And that is, of course, in more ways than just one. I have devoted a lot of my life to costuming now. I enjoy it. It's a fun hobby. But my goodness, it, it is time consuming. It is encompassing. I used to joke with people, nobody has just one costume. Somebody's, oh, you're always working on the next one, the next one, and the next one. And this is not a, oh, poor Hawk has too many costumes video, right? It's just, when you get into a hobby, you should look at all the aspects. Make sure you're okay with all of it. I am, I am, but every now and again, it gets a bit uh, overwhelming. The amount of uh, dedication I now have to have to costume. Well, have to isn't the right word. The amount of dedication I get to put into costuming is, is fantastic. Luckily, Kim's super into it too. I mean, this would be this would be a brutally this would not be a fun hobby if I had to do it without my wife. And I am super lucky in the fact that she brought me into it, not the other way around. And the skills that I've spent my entire life perfecting really do help. 
mold making, sewing, painting. She is a good compliment, and I'm very glad I found her. But this isn't a my wife is awesome kind of video either. I'm cleaning. Probably gonna jump ahead a bit because no nobody wants to watch somebody clean. Oh, let's let's what's riveting content. Let's watch a dude clean a table. Clean a table. That shouldn't take very long at all, should it? No. No, it shouldn't. Yet here we are. So yeah, I'm posting an Instagram. That's why it takes so long, right? I stop and I'm like, hey, let's put things away. We'll get back to that. And I put all of the Veritech helmet colors in my handy dandy spray paint tray, right? And, then, and I look, I'm like, hey, that's kind of cool. Let's take a picture. Next thing you know, 15 minutes later, I'm sitting here on my phone, posting to Instagram instead of cleaning my table. I need to clean my table. So part of the reason this takes me so long, right, is I sit here and I go, hmm, and I start making projects for myself, right? Instead of just cleaning, I'm looking at my table going, you know, if I had enough time, I could pry all of this resin up. And then I go through my head and I try and figure out, am I going to do that? Or am I just going to flood coat the whole thing with a crystal clear bar top and just, you know, let it be, turn it into Fordite? I don't know. But instead of cleaning, I sit here and I think about it and then I start playing, going, well, how difficult is it to get all of this up? Right? Surely. This resin has all laminated, so I should be able to just pick each layer up. And yeah, I can. And that would take me days. And of course my OCD kicks in, my little obsessive compulsive kicks in, and I go, oh, and I just start picking. And once I start peeling, it's over, it's done. There's nothing I can do but just keep doing the thing, right? We're all there, we've all done this. Change angles for a minute. I'm going to rant at the camera. So, I'm not saying you aren't special and you aren't unique. Because you are. We all are. And if you're watching this video, chances are, you know, if you have a scab, you're going to pick at it till it's smooth. Because you have to. If I start messing with this table, I'm not going to be able to stop until it's just clean. Until it's done. And that's going to waste a lot of time. And it's okay. If that's what I have to do, then that's what I have to do. It is okay to have quirks. It's okay to not being able to stop. It's okay to, to do the thing. I have to learn a limit and I have to teach myself. And it's, it is, it's like an entertaining fact I picked up. Hold on, I'll be right back. So we've all been trained. We've all been taught things, right? Um, The most entertaining fact I know about Pavlov is that the minute I say that name, you think of a dog. We've all been trained. And we can all be untrained. Habits are learnable and unlearnable. Right? I quit smoking over a decade ago. It wasn't easy. It wasn't fun. But I did it. I just had to retrain those habits into something else. Same thing with this. I could sit and pick at all of this resin until every drop of it is up. And there's a level of diminishing return where I'm like, eh, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Do I stop? No. Can't help it. Do I bust out power tools? Probably. I mean, it's a belt sander do wonders to this table. Better rip through the uh, fiberglassing and, you know, it's not worth my time. So what I'm going to do Gonna take the cutoff from one of my shells, set it down, and make it my new work surface till I'm done. Because it's the fastest, easiest, and best way to do it. I want to sit and pick at the table until it's clean. And it's okay if in your, the middle of your projects, 
you have to stop and pick at the table till it's clean. Don't don't beat yourself up over it. It's okay. It really it is okay. But every now and again, try and let it go. Like now. Oh, yeah. Legos. Who needs them? They're just like us. I got a lot of Legos. I have a lot of Legos, right? And I know a couple people here are wondering, what does that have to do with mold making? A lot. I know people use foam core and coroplast to make molds. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I prefer Legos. I don't know why. I always have. It just makes me entertained to think that my molds are made from Lego bricks. But of course it means you gotta go through a bunch of Legos. And like we were just talking about, you know, being distracted. Oh my goodness. Legos are distracting. I'm going to grab a bunch of pieces, set out what I need, and then we're going to come back to this. Oh, I had to grab the other thing. I got like four more, but I think these are the two I need. These are most of my big flat pieces. And a ceratops. He is a do or do not ceratops because there is no try. All right, I'm gonna pull out a bunch of the pieces I need, and then we'll pop back over in a second. Because I know there's people who want it. Weird, but you know, hey, I ain't judging you for your kink. I don't want you to feel, you know, like you missed out on the experience. I swear there's just a loop of that going over in my head my whole life. So I would have normally just dumped this out on a blanket and gone and gotten the pieces I needed and pulled everything back up, but... I didn't, and that's about that. All right, so this is the hardest part. I want about a brick all the way around, one line's worth, um, just for, for mold, right? It makes it a little more durable. And this part's easy. This is just stacking bricks. Make sure to stagger your seams. As you can see, I have done this once or twice with these. And I'm probably gonna wanna go uh, five or six are tall. But as these Legos are indication of, it will um, pour through. So, you know, keep it in mind when you uh, set everything up, make sure it's around uh, stuff that's, you know, easy to clean up. So I'm just going to keep stacking. I'm going to save you the rattle, rattle, rattle of Lego, Lego, Legos. So I didn't stagger my seam there. It's going to come back to bite me, I'm sure. But just not this time. Legos fit together pretty okay. They're not, you know, perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But they, they'll work good enough. Good enough. Probably the title of my autobiography. I have a feeling we're about to jump into time-lapse mode. Because, you know, this is going to take a bit. And there's a lot of uh, digging through bins that I'm going to spare you.
I think there's a Lego ASMR channel. This is where somebody's just scooping. Because I'm sure some of us, this is the sound of our childhood. Huh. Pretty neat. Jeep. So we have our molds done, right? And this is where I think Lego really comes into its own as far as a, a walling medium. Because I can do this, right? It's way harder to do that with uh, anything that's not Lego. So I can pop it off and secure my piece onto the platform. Provided my glue gun is warm enough, which I do not believe it is. So before I glue everything down, I'm going to go over it all again one more time with some sandpaper and let my glue gun heat up. So all of these are going to get sanded and primed before they ever go on a Tuscan. So I'm not super worried about them being perfect. There's an amount of diminishing returns here to where, you know, good enough really is good enough. I suppose I could put these back together, huh? 100%. Oh. No. 100% ready to go. As is that one. Alright. Now the eyes are a little different. The eyes I want to make sure that they are um, angled properly. So I want them facing in a one direction in particular. And we're going to pour them last just because I'm not quite sure how I want to pour them yet. So they're definitely going to be a two part mold. I'm just not sure how I want to do that yet. There, ready for resin. All right, now we're ready for resin. All I did with the eyes is put some tape on the inside. Took a little bit because, you know, things are being annoying today. Got my two cups, blue for blue, yellow for purple, as one does. I need a knife. This stuff's toxicity level is super low. I just don't want to get it all over everything. Because it is very, very messy. If you let it be. I hate these containers so very much. I said that last time. And it is still true this time. I'm tempted to dump it into the... Uh, trial container just so I have something that's useful easy to use this stuff is just horrible in this big bin all right Equal parts A and B, or equal parts yellow and blue, however you want to look at it. Hopefully this is enough. I don't think it's enough. Exact same thing, but in blue, or pink, however you want to look at it. Oh, 
I'm sure there's an easy way of doing this, right? Okay, you just use the whole bucket. Now begins the annoying task of filling to the line. There you go. Guess that wasn't too bad. Since this is a very slow and tedious process, I'm only going to show you once. And do the rest of them on my own. I suppose I could have weighed the previous mold to see uh, how much rubber I was going to need. That's a level of forethought that I have not yet uh, managed to reach. And this is a point in sprockets where we mix for days. They make attachments for like drills that make this thing so easy. I don't have one. I don't have a reason for not having one. I absolutely should. I mix enough resin I should. Absolutely have one of those little paddle attachments. Oh no. Or at the very least a spatula. I did baking for a really long time. It helps. This isn't really much different than a making frosting. Looks pretty okay. All right, I'm gonna bring you in for the pour. Everybody likes to see the pour. The pour is nice because it's a slow drizzle. Let's go with nose tooth. So we want to prop it up at an angle. Because I am going to drip in and let it slowly fill. I'm using one glove, so I have run out of gloves. So you look, there's a lot, a lot of bubbles in here, right? And everybody's like, oh, you have to degas. You don't have to degas. I'm going to go in a thin enough stream that it's not going to matter. I hope. I know I said that pretty confident, didn't I? The thinner the stream, the more bubbles pop on their own. Mold making takes forever. Luckily, you don't have to put up with all of it. There you go. That is mold making. Okay, since this is a two-part mold, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna film it too. But I'm not gonna say anything clever or witty. That way, I can uh, I can edit out if I don't like it. I know. I don't ever say anything clever or witty. Thanks, Faith. Jerk. Rotate it so the slits are up. That way, any air bubbles can uh, escape that way. I could pop the sides off and uh, brush if I really wanted, but I'm not terribly worried about it.
All right, I gotta see. It's only gonna take me a minute, and I get to head to work. But until then, huh? Let's see what we got. Well, it's solid brick, which is exactly what we wanted. I'm gonna do some trim up before I pull the piece out though. So this is all well and good. Got everything out. We really wanna see what it looks like cast. So let's uh let's mix them up real quick and see what we get. Probably gonna have to mix a couple of batches, but you know, it is what it is. Luckily, I like mixing risk. It'd be way easier to do if I had my glasses on. There you go. It's a little left. It's not bad. So here we are at the end of the video. The eyes came out pretty okay. The insides did not. Um, the uh, the rubber on the inside, this part didn't quite cure right. I think it was an issue with my uh, the the resin print not being fully cleaned. My failing, not the product. Um, so I'm probably going to end up redoing these. Uh, the nose tore out a little bit. When I pulled it out of the mold, so probably gonna redo that one too. Blood spitters, perfect. Horns, beyond perfect. These two, I am way super, super happy with. So more than likely, I'm gonna pull the center plug out, put the eye back in, and then just re-pour that. I don't need to do the whole mold. The outside came out great. The outside is fantastic. It's smooth, it's even. Um, Repouring it again on the inside will definitely, I'll, I'll uh, be able to put um, Vaseline down, petroleum jelly, to uh, as a barrier, a, a block, and then just fill it. That way I know the, um, the plug is 100%. I can probably carve a little point into it so I, I, I can align it a little better. Um, the nose tooth is just, it is what it is. I'll just recast it. Um, I should have clear coated everything, and I didn't. And that was uh, my mistake. But 
no need to pull you along for my mistake. Um, so that's how I make molds. It's not it's not too difficult. Anybody can really do this stuff. Um, even making a few mistakes is it's not a big deal. Um, I've ruined more molds than than I can ever care to remember, and it's just having fun anyway. If you're not having fun with what you're doing, reevaluate what you're doing and why you're doing it. I don't do any of this to try and make money. Period. It's it's there is no way I will ever make money off of any of my Tuscans or anything like that. That's I do it because my friends like making costumes or having fun. And uh, it's something I can do with my friends. It really is it. Somebody goes, hey, I want this thing. And I go, all right, let me figure out how to make it. It is what it is. But I like Legos. Legos make a great medium for, uh, for walls. So other than that, that is what it is. Uh, if you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, even a little bit, uh, maybe even motivational. It's trying to be motivational. I wasn't trying to be motivational. I was having a crappy day. And I have found whenever I have a bad day, if I uh, pull people up, it tends to pull me up a little bit too. So that one was for free. So if uh, you know you did find this any find this any entertaining, if you did find this entertaining, think about subscribing. Because according to my analytics, a lot of people who watch my videos don't subscribe. Um, fair. I don't subscribe to most of the things I watch too. But, you know, if you want to, there's a button, wherever the button happens to be, depending on what you're watching it on. Um, other than that, I uh, really hope to see you in the next one.